because he rose again from the from the grave and he took death, hell, and the grave cat. Where it doesn't hold us any longer, that this life is not all there is. And let me tell you, when we come in this morning, I thought, you know, I wanted the I want the atmosphere to be more like a praise and worship time. I want it to be a celebration time because it is all about the victory over the grave. It's victory over hell, victory over death. That this body is temporary. It will go away. And we will receive our eternal body, which will never go away. So we're just passing through this world. Now, we have to understand something. Last Friday was Good Friday and everything and so forth. Last Sunday, Palm Sunday and everything. Keep in mind, let's set the stage for this. The very people that was praising Him as He came into Jerusalem, the very people laying palm branches on the, on the ground and their jackets and everything, yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. The very people that did that was the very people that hung Him on the cross. Praising Him in one week, cursing Him in the other. Even His apostles did not. And scattered. Peter is the famous story of that. But then as, as Christ hung there on the cross and He paid the penalty for your and my sin, He looked up to heaven and He said three words. It is finished. What was finished? He bore the world's sin on His shoulders. Okay, now listen. Let's, we're sitting the stage here. The devil is running through the crowd, provoking the crowd to say, I got him. I got him. He's mine. As soon as he takes his last breath, his spirit is mine. He's coming down with me. I'll forever have him. And in fact, it's a whole other message, but what happened between the time he died and the time he rose again within those three days? Well, a lot of things. Jesus went into the belly of hell. And the devil thought he had him. But then Jesus had to remind him that he himself committed no sin, but bore the sins of the world upon him. And that God the Father, because he loved the world, and the devil hated the world, but because the Father loved the world, is the reason that he came. And he looked at the devil and he said, You have me here illegally. You have no right over me. You have no right over God's people. And from this day forward, I have the keys to death, hell, and grave. And he rose again. Victorious. Now, the disciples up above were still in mourning. They were attending a funeral. They were grieving over their best friend lost. And then Jesus himself appeared unto them many times and took away that grief and turned that grief into a joyous celebration. Loved ones, we are living in a day and age where it seems like it can't get much worse. But it will. Yes. It will get worse before it gets better. And the only thing standing in worse, in, in, the, in, in the way of worse, is the good that resides within each and every one of you. The good news that resides within each and every one of you, right here, Jesus, is the only thing that stops the bad from happening. And God needs you to spread the good news in every way that you can. Whether it's service in the church, testimony at the workplace, testimony online, or at your social gatherings, God needs you to share your story and His Son's story where His Son met you. Couldn't help but wonder as I was preparing the service today, Easter Sunday is all about, it's all about Jesus. It's in, in the words of my 10-year-old son, he called this Wow Sunday. Called it Wild Sunday. He even drew it upon the uh, dry erasing board we have in the bathroom. This is what I walk into, and Job was particularly excited Tuesday or Wednesday of this past week. And he was just like jumping and clicking needles, kind of excited. And he was like, that day I can't wait for Easter. He said, It's when Jesus rose again. And I was so happy with that, but he. I didn't know he had done that. And so when I get into the bathroom and I open up the, the mirror and stuff and prepare for my day, I see that message. Easter. 
Wild Sunday. It's Wild Sunday. And that's the atmosphere we need to have. It's Wild Sunday for each and every one of us. Jesus is, in fact, risen from the grave. We are not here in mourning. We are here in victory. We are not here as victims. We're here as victors. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. It is a wild Sunday for each and every one of us. Right. Because Christ rose again from the grave is why we have our being today. Is Amen. why we have power over death, hell, and grave. Right. That we don't have to succumb to fear and anxieties. We don't have to succumb that, that God is in us and he can do far more greater things within us than we can ever imagine. God will take us from ordinary to extraordinary. we got to understand that God wants to move you from where you're at to where he wants you to be. But we're too busy like Jonah sometimes and we're running away. It may be for when the message of Jesus Christ came to your ears so many years ago that your wild Sunday become, became re relevant. Easter became relevant. It became more than just hunting Easter eggs and, and, and so forth. It became about a risen Savior. <laughs> But nonetheless, Christ came a knocking on your door to your heart. And you had a response. You had a decision to make. And when you made that decision to follow Jesus, something changed within you. Now I said it at the sunrise service earlier today. Transformed lives end up having lives that's transformed. Meaning, when Jesus Christ comes into your life, He starts the transformation process. You don't think the way you used to think anymore. You start to take upon a new character, the character of Christ. And when that happens, you're transformed. Your mind is renewed, according to Romans 12, 1. Your mind is renewed. Christ is becoming a part of your life. He's becoming Lord of your life. And as He becomes Lord of your life, guess what happens? People see transformation. And when they see transformation, they say, I want what you got. But if they don't see transformation, you're just like the next person. But ever since you decided to follow Christ, ever since that decision, you were never the same. Ever since Christ called upon you and pulled you into himself, he poured grace upon you. You felt it, you tasted it in your heart that it's a grace that you didn't deserve. You also experienced that your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That when you stand before the Father, you can honestly say that I made you my Lord and Savior. That to me is a wild Sunday. For if Jesus did not rise from the grave, then we are a people to be pitied. And we are still dead in our sins. But faith within us tells us a different story. But I know, and you know, that Jesus did in fact rise again from the grave. And He took with Him the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And that is so very important. Because we see the end of life coming. We see our loved ones dying, sometimes unexpectedly. And we, and we, we kind of drop in hope. We drop in faith. We're mourning. And these are all normal for us to feel. But we are not to stay there. Remember the message Jesus gave to Mary? When he revealed himself to her, what did he tell her? He said, Mary, go tell the disciples and Peter. Well, Peter was a disciple last time I checked. Why did he specifically mention Peter? Because Peter was going through not only mourning over his best friend dying, but he was also grieving the fact that he rejected him three times. I don't know where you're from. I don't know your upbringing. I don't know where you're at right now with the Lord. But maybe you're a Peter. Or maybe you're a disciple that's never really doubted or never really rejected Christ. But maybe you're a Peter and you have. <coughs> I'm, I'm here to tell you that Jesus says, I'm, I love you. And I'm here. And I'm here to tell you that I rose again. Easter Sunday is a reminder that death is not all there is. Jesus wasn't afraid to die because He knew that there was life, eternal life on the other end. He came from the Father, came to this wretched world, and then went back to the Father. He knew where He was going. Jesus' mission was to save humanity. And a lot of us go through this life not even knowing what our mission is. I'm here to tell you, if you put yourself in the place where God can speak to you, He'll reveal that mission to you. Neither did the disciples. They were out fishing on the boat, doing what they were doing. 
catching fish. It wasn't doing very well this day. And Jesus says, hey, cast your net on the other side. And their first thought, we've been doing this all day. There ain't nothing over here, but nonetheless, we'll try it because it's our livelihood. And they couldn't even draw it in. They were so full. And then Jesus put the, their mission out there. He said, I will make you pictures of that. So what's Jesus' plan for you? For those who believe in Jesus Christ, eight Easter is a proclamation that Jesus is risen, that Jesus will return for all those who call upon him. Let's stand and say. We're running out of time. And Jesus, in fact, is coming. And there is, in fact, going to be a glorious day. And we are running out of time, not only to get things right personally with God, but also to spread that good news to others who have yet to experience it. We cannot be ashamed. We cannot hide the gift that God has given us under a stone or a bush. We cannot keep it to ourselves. You know, America used to be that in the time where we're sitting on our front porch waving as people go by and open doors and unlock doors. Now, we are an American people who have moved from the front porch to the back porch with privacy fences and locked doors. We are keeping the message all to ourselves. We are only worried about our own selves. And this is not the time or the day and age to do that. The message of the gospel has never been selfish. It has always been inclusive, all inclusive to the world. Not just for you. It reminds me of a passage we see in Luke chapter 11. And it was to from Jesus to the people who said, who sought for a sign. They wanted a sign that God is real. And that's what it says. It says, as the crowds increased, Jesus says, this is a wicked generation. It asks for a sign, but none will be given it, except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites, so also will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them. For she shall... For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up in judgment with this generation and condemn it. For if they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. When Jesus was preaching and Jesus was doing these miracles, he was saying, that the Son of God stands before you right now testifying to what the Father wants to do in the lives of people. To, to, to heal the brokenhearted, to open up the prison doors, to set at liberty those who are captive. That's what Jesus came to do. And they were just not accepting it. They were blind. And what Jesus was saying, Jonah went to Nineveh and preached to these people. And they repented and they came full circle to the Lord. And I'm trying to tell you that I am greater than Jonah. The Son of God is here right now testifying to you, doing these miracles, and yet you still not believe. Well, I tell you what, the people that did repent in Nineveh will stand in judgment of you that don't believe. You see, the problem with everybody in life, the world's a mess. The world's a mess right now. Because if I was to hold up a piece of fabric before you, a t-shirt, and that t-shirt represented God's character, and God's on one side, humanity's on another side, and I started ripping it. The shirt's made to stay together. But since we're tearing away from the fabric of God's character, and humanity wants to run a different way, it's tearing something that was whole. Meant to stay together. And we're running from God. <coughs> and God says, you're a mess because you're running from the very character I made you. 
I made you in the image of myself. And you're running from it. And the problem with, Jesus, with each and every one of us is Jesus eventually confronts us. Jesus eventually confronts us. What will you do when Jesus confronts you? Jesus confronted this man at 21 years of age. I quit running. I started accepting. Before 21, I, started, I was the rip in the fabric. I was running a different way. I was running away from the very plan that God had for me. And of course my life was chaotic. Of course I had all the conflict that any person could want. And it's not that all those things are over now. It's just the fact that I got a Savior. Amen. And I live in a fallen world. And I will experience challenges. I will experience conflict. But I'm different now. I've got a Savior. I've got a, a Savior who will do great and wondrous things. I've got a Savior that's creating me to be what I need to be. I often wonder, what would your reaction be if Jesus confronted you like He confronted the people in Luke of His day? If Jesus appeared right now before your very eyes, how would you react? Well, I don't know. Billy Graham was a great preacher. Well, greater than Billy Graham is standing there in front of you. How would you react? There are still movies being made. There are still TV shows being done. There are still documentaries being done in which people are trying to understand Jesus. And the reason they're so confused is they're still running from them. And they need to run to them. For it's only in running to Him. For it is only being humble at heart and falling to our knees and accepting Him as our Lord and Savior that we then begin to understand who He is and what He wants to do in and through us. Why are we trying to still figure out Jesus? The chaos we're feeling is because we've been running from the purposes of God in our life. Even Christians battle this. We run for a period of time. It's like we have good quarters and bad quarters, you know, four quarters in life and, and stuff. Some people are in half time and some people are in time out. And, and so, but Christians, you know, sometimes we run to God and sometimes we, we run away from Him. God's got to get big plans for your life and you're afraid. But fear is a lie. Do you know what the object of God's love is, the very focus of God's love, do you know what it is? It's not His Son. It's you. For God so loved the world that He gave His Son. You are the focus of God's love. You are the reason He went through everything He did. There was over 72,000 angels, swords in hand, ready to come down to heaven and take the Savior home and not endure any of that upon His command. And you know what? He stayed on the cross. For you and me. He says, it is finished. Sin is oftentimes like a disease. Lala had just recently gotten over a bronchial infection that took her voice for, well, for some of you know for many days. At first I thought this was a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> but then I prayed for her. In all seriousness, we go through things. Sometimes we've got to be quiet to hear God. Why did she have to go through all that? She don't like being without her voice. I said, maybe God's trying to tell us to be quiet and listen. And maybe in your Easter wild Sunday today, your wild Sunday, maybe in the festivities of today, what you've got to do, where you've got to go, the families you need there. Maybe in all that hustle and bustle, maybe you can be quiet a little bit and focus upon this life. Easter Sunday is, in fact, the wow of what God did for you. In 1 John 5, 4, it says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. 
And what we, we have to ask ourselves today, when we walk out of here today, are we living the lives that we ought to live? Are we expressing this wild Sunday and everything we're supposed to celebrate about? Or is this just another Easter? As we sing the last couple songs of the service time together, I want you to reflect on the fact that it's because God lives within each and every one of us that we have this day. And it is because of the same power that God has given up, given Christ, the same power resides within us. To go out there and spread the good news of this wild Sunday. I pray that you have a happy and blessed Easter as we sing our last purpose.